So here in Holy Family, we often have, well, often, once or once, twice a week, maybe, we have movie nights, and it is on movie nights that uh, the, one of the truths of our first reading becomes very apparent, and that is that guys and girls are different. Um, when it comes to movie nights, it has come to blows on numerous occasions, um, but ice packs and uh, frozen peas have been distributed afterwards. <laughs> And it's like every time, every time it comes to choosing a movie, like it's like Disney cartoon spirit horses <laughs> running, frolicking, doing their thing versus explosions, guns and meaningless violence. <laughs> and hence ensues the, 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 the discussion. Uh, the, it's interesting today because it, there seems to be an effort in the world to try and, in some regards anyway, take away the idea that men and women are different. And I think if, if we take the positive out of that, I think the, the positive intention, I think, is that if men and women uh, are the same, then there's no tension, there's no uh, violence, there's no animosity, you know? So if they're the same, then they're united. Because if we take away difference, then there's unity. Right? But that's obviously, I think, uh, that's like, that, that idea doesn't work. You know what I mean? You take, because if you take away difference, you also take away truth. Okay? Because it's, it's just plain obvious in practically every regard that men and women are different. Okay? I mean, we see it whenever we go play in sport, we see it whenever we go uh, camping, whenever, <laughs> whenever, whenever we're doing jobs around the house, whenever we have free time, Whenever you're sitting at a table conversation, sit at a table with a bunch of lads, sit at a table with a bunch of girls, and just observe the difference. You know what I mean? Like, like I have never once heard the lads talk about clothes ever. I'm not even sure if they were aware what, what they were putting on. They probably put the clothes on in the dark, <laughs> would be my estimation, judging by some. <laughs> <laughs> so they just don't care, for the most part. Okay, so okay, now so some would say that's gender stereotyping. Good, sue me. Um, <coughs> Uh, just you imagine, I imagine like, uh, I've used this example before, but a couple, a married couple in bed, it's three o'clock in the morning, and they hear some glass break downstairs, something like a window breaking or something. So you can imagine the husband rolling over to the wife saying, honey, do you want to check that out? <laughs> like, it, what on earth, what self-respecting husband would do that? If men and women were the same, I mean, I mean, we're we're equal in this marriage, aren't we? So off you go. So it's it's good to, and it's it's good and it's delicate and it's difficult to get into the part like the differences are between men and women, but to never see them as opposites or as kind of as as reasons for division. There are reasons for distinction. Men and women are different, yes, but that doesn't mean superior inferior. I never said that. Okay, superior inferior. That's that's absolutely. The, 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 the result of the fall, the result of sin, that one would see uh, white people see themselves as superior to, to Africans and men superior to women and, uh, you know, people from the north side superior to the south side, and people from west of the river superior. That's all. That's just, that's the consequence of sin. All right. Because that's human arrogance and pride. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about now. I'm, I'm saying that men and women are different, which is good. Because I would imagine that for most guys, when they're going out with a girl, they don't want her to be like one of the guys. I can imagine. And kind of vice versa. You know, I don't think a girl wants her boyfriend to be an expert or in, 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 even more, how would you say, well informed about makeup than her. I mean, I just don't think, you know, I think guys want, want, want their girlfriends to be feminine and girls want their boyfriends to be masculine which I think is completely normal. Remember, complementarity. And for, for, for that complementarity to be the case, we have to be different. We bring different things into a relationship or into a marriage, which is good. If you ever try to make an apple crumble with no crumble, that's called applesauce. If you ever try to make an apple crumble with no apple, that's called short, shortbread, kind of, I suppose. Or just general misery. I mean, you know, <laughs> the whole point is, the fact that they're different yet together is what makes the thing so good. Okay, so difference is not, distinction, difference is not the problem here. Okay, St. Paul says, and there are many priests wiping their brows this morning that they did not have to preach on this. 
Uh, but I like it. Uh, give way to one another in obedience to Christ. Wives should regard their husbands as they regard the Lord. Sin, and this is, by the way, in our particular version here, this is between brackets, so someone before me, not anyone here, had intended on skipping that line, so I'll read it. Uh, Since as Christ is the head of the church and saves the whole body, so is a husband the head of his wife. And as the church submits to Christ, so, so should wives submit to their husbands in everything. Okay, now we read this and our 21st century ears go ballistic and say, that's slavery, that's and that's unjust, that's exactly the kind of misogyny uh, that, that, that the church is, yada, yada, yada. Okay, all these kind of things. Um, okay, but firstly, we have to read into what's being said here, and then we have to read into what follows. Okay, so keep, keep, always keep the context in mind. Okay, so we'll look at these lines first, then we look at what follows. So, basically it says, wives should submit to their husbands. What does submit mean? Submission. Submission. To place yourself under the mission of. Submission. Under the mission of. So what's the mission <coughs> of a husband? The mission of a husband, uh, in a more global sense, is that the family, which he's supposed to lead, gets to heaven. Should a wife share in that mission of getting the family to heaven? Yes. On a more kind of particular level, our first mission is that I become a saint, that I, I become the man God's calling me to be. Should a wife place herself under that mission? Well, absolutely. So we're, we're under the same mission here, to sanctify our family, to get our family to heaven, to become saints, you know, to provide for the needs of our family. That's not a, that's not a bad thing. Okay? It's, this does not mean slavery. Submission does not mean slavery, but it means I place myself under, under that same mission. Okay? Now, that, will that mean that on occasion I'll have to renounce my will? Yes, of course. That's what, this, that's what drives our 21st century ears crazy. Renouncing our will, renouncing our desires, renouncing our passion sounds like slavery. It sounds like I can't be me. It sounds like I can't be free. No, what it means is that we use our reason, our love, to guide our actions so we're not dragged every direction by every passion that comes our way. Because if you do, Families don't stand a chance. Love doesn't stand a chance. So we help, you know, with, with our, our reason and our, 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 our love. This guides us in our, in our mutual submission. Okay, next line. Husbands should love their wives just as Christ loved the church and sacrificed himself for her. Husbands should love their wives as Christ loved his church. How did Jesus love his church? Well, he was hated and condemned by a crowd. He was spat at, beaten up. He was scourged. A cross was placed on his back, which he dragged up a hill, to which he was nailed and died after three hours of agony. I think the ladies get off easily. That's how husbands are supposed to love their wives. This has nothing to do with domination and, and I command and you do what I tell you. That, that's not what this reading is saying. Right, Ephesians 5, it's a beautiful, beautiful reading of how husbands and wives place themselves under this mutual submission, right? Even, it's, even it says so at the end. To sum up, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself. Let every wife respect her husband. First line, give way to one another. Give way to one another in obedience to Christ. Okay, keep, listen, look, listen to the whole reading. It's saying, out of love for one another, renounce your will in favour of the other. But both of you, both husbands and wives, place yourselves under the same mission. Build up this family in sanctity. Love your wife as you love your own body. Love your wife as Jesus loved the church. Do you see how, 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 how deep this reading is and how, how beautiful it is and what it's really calling married life to? It's, it's not. This is, this, is, this, is a, this is a good thing. Very misunderstood today. I remember talking to friends of mine uh, about, what, 20, 15 years ago maybe, when I was still in the seminary, but they were starting to get married, and uh, some different couples were pairing off and, and getting married. And uh, it was interesting then to meet them when I'd come home for Christmas about how things are going and how married life is treating them. And uh, just 
fascinating. Obviously, me being a spectator, seminarian, future priest kind of guy, I could just kind of sit back and watch the train wreck. <laughs> no, 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 it was lovely. Um, but they were saying, no, no, it's good, like, it's good, no. It's different, 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 like, um, do you know, uh, you know, like, a fella's bedroom, just fairly straightforward, like, heap of clean clothes, heap of dirty clothes, and then there's, like, the, there's, like, the, the bed, right? Which has, like, a blanket or a, sh- a duvet and, like, a pillow on it. Whereas now I come in, like, and there are all these kind of, I think they're called th- throw pillows, right? So, so they're on the bed, like, but then, see, during the day, then, like, they're on the bed, and then at night, you put them, you put them on the ground, and then in the morning, so you're supposed to, like, put them, you put them back up on the bed again. I, 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 don't, I don't know what they're for, but she likes them. I don't know. Like, and then, like, you go into the shower, like, a lad's shower is fairly straightforward, like, you've got a bottle of shampoo, right? And you've got a bar of soap, right? Uh, and I go into the shower now, and it's like, coconut oil and kiwi juice and, <laughs> and butter, butter balm and enough razors to shave an orangutan. <laughs> I, I don't know, like, it's, it's grand life. Just, maybe you, you, you can have that shower, I'll, maybe I'll use this other, you know, and it's just, the, the, the stuff they observed was just hilarious, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, Manny's a night we had in, 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 in the pub there and heard us talking about these things, so funny. But, uh, because like, men and women are different. They're different. But this should be seen as complementary. Our differences then become, we bring different things to a, to a marriage, and that's what makes the marriage strong. Not that we're the same, that we're different, but we work together. Different, but together. Different, but united. So Lord, we ask for a renewal of our understanding of marriage, and for a renewal maybe of our own families, for a renewal of families that we know we're going through difficulties. I was talking to um, a couple that I married, uh, and they're going through a rough patch now again. And and you can see how, how this reading, like if it was lived, how it, it it would work. It would work. Yeah, the guy is getting distracted by all sorts of other things and feels he has to work really hard to pay for a, a bigger car than they actually need. And then he's working loads of overtime. And he's at home with the with the family because he wants to provide the standard of living which no one ever asked him to provide. And it's just, it's all kind of spiraling out of control. So we, we pray for the renewal of families. We pray for the renewal of homes. We pray for this build, basic building block of society, the family. Lord, that it may be renewed in your love, that it may be strengthened in you, and that we may give way to one another in obedience to you. Amen. <laughs>